Welcome to episode 14 of the Beef Bar Room Radio TV. We've got Christmas coming up, um, and for I know there are those of you out there who don't believe in Christmas, and you'd rather believe in Festivus, a Festivus for the rest of us. So uh, today we're going to do our special Festivus episode. I, I know it's not until December 23rd, but um, I'm not going to be here on the 23rd, and neither is my cameraman, so we're going to do our Festivus episode today. We found a Festivus poll. It's a little bit short. I mean, it's not ideal, but... Uh, we're going to have to work with it, so this is our Festivus poll, and uh, later on, as you'll see, we'll go on to the airing of grievances and the feat of strength, so enjoy our Festivus episode. Happy Festivus, everyone. Welcome back to the Beef Bar, Bruin Banner TV. We're joined by Bruins head coach and GM, Keith Cassidy. And Keith, as part of our Festivus episode today, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Festivus, a Festivus for the rest of us. Um, we're d gonna do our airing of grievances stage here, where uh, we uh, basically tell each other how we've disappointed the other over the past year. Um, first of all, I'm gonna go back to that time where you made us wait a whole five minutes after the game before you came out and did interviews. What was with that? I, you know, uh, I, I try and be as accommodating as possible. I apologize for that five-minute wait, but uh, we'll try and keep it to under two from now on. How's that? That's better, I guess. I mean, you know what your first priority should be, right? The media's got to come first. Absolutely. Before I go in and talk to my team after a game, I'm going to get out here and, and talk to the media first because that's my priority. See, we're making some headway already. Okay, uh, how have I made you mad over the last year? Uh, I, I was raised, Josh, to, to, if I don't have anything nice to say, I probably shouldn't say anything at all. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to avoid putting my foot in my mouth. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, you guys, media, you know, I, I come from a place where, you know, we, don't get a, we didn't get a whole lot of coverage with a very good hockey club and, uh, you know, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm I'm thankful for the coverage we get here in in Estevan. So uh, I don't have any um, I don't have anything major I want to get out there right now. So we'll, we're all good. We didn't cover you very much during the race season. Do you? Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, really, any coverage I did get for that race thing was was probably. Uh, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't something you wanted to do anyway. You had, you had other races to cover. I mean, hey, I understand that. I'm a rookie. Um, there's probably no, no, uh, no reason to be out there covering a car that barely finishes. So I'm um, hoping to do better this year. Um, and uh, right now we've got a hockey team to worry about, and that's, that's where my mind's at. Well, if you can move up from the 12th and 13th place finishes to win a couple of reaches next year, that'll change. Yeah, it'd be great. I mean, I, I came close this year. I was leading with six laps to go until I was, hey, there's a grievance I can air. I got blatantly taken out on leading the, I led the whole race. Blatantly taken out. No, like, it wasn't even racing. It was just take the guy out. That's what it was. And it was very disappointed in that. So that guy's, he's not getting anything from my, my you know, for Christmas from me anyway. So... You know, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually the race season next year. I had a lot of fun with it this year and uh, learned a lot, met a lot of great people, and I uh, yeah, hope to have some fun with it going forward. So now we're hearing about your grievances with other people. Uh, who else has made you angry over the last year? Um, you know what? I'm, a, I'm generally a pretty positive, upbeat guy. Um, there's been a, the odd official that has got on my bad side, but uh, you know, there again, I tr try not to make too big a deal out of it. We try and keep things in our under our control, but uh, you know, um, I would say the officials are about the biggest thing that get on my nerves. Uh, but I, in terms of other grievances, like I said, a pretty happy-go-lucky guy. So 
or in, you know, you'd have to do something pretty, pretty uh, pointed to get me upset, I think, so. You just reminded me of one, actually, and technically it was over the last 12 months. Uh, I remember the, the game against Waver last year, Sheldon Dean made a lot of people angry. There was the, uh, the missed hit to the head on yeah. Tyler Poskis, and I think for the only time ever, you were actually purple after that game. Yeah, I probably was, and, and for good reason. I think that, that was a, hor <laughs> a horrible incident, uh, and we haven't seen much of him since then, thank goodness. Um, but uh, that, that may come back to bite us yet, yet this year. Um, but yeah, that was a, a horrible incident, and uh, I'm thankful that uh, Poskis is okay, and um, I'll just keep that in the back of my mind. I'm guessing there's no grievances with Stephen Glass right now. Uh, he was phenomenal early in his first start of the year uh, against Yorkton on Tuesday, 44 saves, and made some huge ones. Uh, how nice was that to see him uh, play like that in his first game? Well, in his first game back, that's phenomenal. I know he was uh, jittery, a little nervous before the game, um, but you know he prepared well. He, he took his time uh, making sure he was good to go. I think he was pretty focused, and I, I, you know, people that attended the game last night saw a fantastic show of goaltending, um, and uh, yeah, he gave us a chance to win the game, which both of our goaltenders have done this year, um, and you know, I'm happy to see him back. That's going to do it for this. Uh, I was expecting a little more of the grievances, but uh, that'll do it for this part. Is that, of is that a grievance you have with me right now, that I don't have enough grievances? Yeah, yeah there's another one. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't walk around with any chips on my shoulder. I just, hey, you know, we, we do what we can and move on. But I understand the grievances. I'm not sure very many people are going to pick up on the Festivus thing, though. I mean, that's, a, that's an old Seinfeld thing. I mean, if you talk to the guys in the dressing room about Seinfeld, they're like, huh, what? You know. I mean, that's more their We're getting old. That's more their problem than ours, though. I mean, oh, it, too. You know, they don't know good TV. You know, they're they're more. What, what do they watch now? What, what do you guys watch now? Reality TV. Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. There's some good television right yeah, there. They, yeah, there, that should be a grievance right there. Anybody that puts that on television. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think anybody who doesn't know what Festivus is, that's way more your problem than it is ours. So you should just go educate yourself. Absolutely. All right, that's gonna do it. Welcome back to the Beef Bar Brewing Band of TV. We're doing our Festivus episode today, and uh, part one part of Festivus is uh, the Feats of Strength. So I'm joined by Bruins colleague Curtis Martin, and for the Feats of Strength, we're going to do arm wrestling. First of all, I want to point out that Marty here um, didn't know what Festivus was. I had to explain it to him. How, how ashamed are you that you didn't know what Festivus is? Yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty embarrassed right now, actually. Yeah, yeah, I should have known that. I'll uh, start reading some books, I guess, and picking up on some stuff. Watching more Seinfeld. Yeah, it's not books. You, gotta, you just got to watch more Seinfeld. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, uh, for the feats of strength, we're going to do arm wrestling here. What do you think your chances are? <sighs> I'm going to go with uh, you know, 50-50 chance right now. I mean, you could be some superhero, right? So, I don't know. Super strength. We'll see. You guys just did a bunch of running too. How much is your strength sapped right now? Pretty gassed actually right now. I'm uh, muscles are just beat. I gotta get home soon, get a protein shake in me. So, yeah, uh, I think uh, we'll see. Fifty-fifty. So basically, what you're saying is you're pretty vulnerable right now, and I I'm just gonna pound you in this. Ah, uh, well, I see it goes two ways. I'm gonna slam you right off the bat, or I'm gonna toy with you. So we'll see. <laughs> see how it goes. Fair enough. Um, just in case you need any extra motivation for this, I'm going to say that you should pretend that I'm Stephen Glass, and then whoever wins this gets the next start. How about that? Uh, that's, that's fair. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, we're going to get going with the arm wrestling here. You ready? Yep. Come on. <laughs> There's one. There's one. One for Marty. Yep. Ready, set, go. Oh, come on, Josh. Let's go, buddy. Go on, slam me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you had me. Toying with my emotions. Yeah. Well, buddy, you said you were maybe going to toy with me. That's definitely what you did. How do you feel about your, your strategy that you used here? Well, I was just looking at the pretty girl there. And used it for motivation, right? She was watching, so 
didn't want to embarrass myself. Had to had to get the win. I don't lose, right? So it's another thing you could say, I guess. Well, personally speaking, you know, you had two shutouts last week, and I figured you probably deserved the next start against uh, Yorkton here. So I figured I'd kind of let you win so that you should get that next start. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, it's tough to say. Glass played a – I thought he played an excellent game yesterday. You know, he kept us in there. And right now it's up in the air. We uh, Good competition, good battling. So it's going to come to the coach's decision, right? So we'll see what happens. And whatever happens, I'll be happy. You know, if, if he's playing, then I'll cheer him on and just get ready for the next game. All right. Marty, unfortunately, wins the feats of strength. Welcome back to the Beef Bar Bruin Banner TV. We're joined by Brad Pearson, the uh, president of the SFM Bruins alumni. Brad, um, you guys do a lot of things for the Bruins over the course of the year, you know, financially and in other ways. Um, just give us an idea of sort of the purpose of the Bruins alumni and what you guys do. Well, I think when it first got started a few years back, um, the main intention and evidently the economic situation was a lot different Um you know, three, four or five years ago for the Bruins. Um, and I think the main purpose at that point was to just have another source of revenue that we could help out the Bruins. Uh, we never really had a, a, a special one purpose, you know, in mind. We just uh, wanted to have, be able to help out the Bruins wherever it, it may be needed. And, and I guess over the course of years, we've done it in all sorts of different ways. Um, one of the projects you guys are going to get underway here soon is, um, you know, in the Bruins dressing room, right when you walk in there, um, just allowing players to uh, pay to have their names as, as part of that area, you know, just to be uh, to be enshrined, enshrined for years to come. Uh, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's something that, you know, we wanted to do when, when that dressing room was first built, and uh, we're just getting the ball rolling now and just sort of in the design uh design phase of it and uh like you said it's just going to be an opportunity it's going to be a wall display um something that's looks very professional just like the whole dress room and uh whether you played with the bruins 50 years ago or you know maybe played last year um it's an opportunity for alumni to have their name as a you know in a focal point of the dress room and i think the biggest thing is is just it, it gives something to people can tie their you know tie their roots back to the Estevan Bruins and it's going to be great for people coming in the room and whether you're a 17 year old kid coming to play with the Bruins or you know or if you're getting a tour of the room and maybe you played 40 years ago it's uh, I think going to be something really neat to check out those names and make people really proud to have their names up on that wall. You guys have the uh, the annual alumni game coming up to uh, New Year's Day it's going to be in Weyburn this year. Um, I guess first off, just to talk a, a little bit about preparations for that game and obviously what it means um, to alumni to be able to play in that and kind of get together again. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny. Um, the preparations over, have already started. I've been in touch with uh, a couple different guys from the Red Wings alumni, and they're they're great, and they're excited to host us this year. And uh, the biggest thing is just getting the roster together. You know, we don't have a list of necessarily 50 guys that want to play. You have to do a bit of groundwork to get guys out and um, make sure they're in all the right numbers. And, of course, they like to wear the numbers of what they wore, you know, in previous years as a Bruin. So um, we're busy on that right now. Uh, we just had a meeting the other night with our, you know, core group of alumni, and everyone's working hard on, you know, trying to put out a team of, you know, guys that are involved and um, guys that the fans want to see. And although the game is in Weyburn, you will see people drive to Weyburn to see maybe a name that played 20 years ago. We have a really great following when it comes to those games. So it's just about trying to get as many guys out as we can. And lots of years we have people say, look, if you have too many guys, I don't have to play. And we've never done that. You know, we try to fill up the roster. And I think realistically, if we dress 30 people, it wouldn't matter. It's not about the ice time they're receiving at this point of their careers. It's just about the pleasure of getting out and donning a Bruin jersey again and, you know, make themselves feel like part of their, they're still a part of the team. Thanks, Brad.